Hello, welcome to your fairy tale wedding show. I am your host, Claudia Chen. Today we are going to be talking about something that you may not necessarily notice when it's there, but when it's missing, you'll be like, hmm, something's missing. What is it? Well, we're talking about flowers. With us today is a talented and creative flower designer and event designer. She is the owner of Jador Decor, and we have Sonia Bawa with us. Hi, Sonia, how are you? Hi. Hi, Claudia. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you. So thank you so much for coming onto the show with me. Of course. Of course. All right. To start off with, could you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you got into floral and event design? Sure. Um, I've been in the floral and event industry for about 22 years now. My parents and family had a family operated business. They had, we had up to about seven flower shops. So I was kind of like raised in the floral industry. I did a lot of weddings and events and that kind of took me to the event world. I then spent a lot of time in actual wholesale and importing of the flowers, which was really interesting. So I have like a little bit of diverse I would say communications with flowers it's just a, it's just been a really interesting ride but yeah it's been a, it's been a long passion labor to love you have definitely a long experience in this industry now can you tell us what kind of services does Jador Decor offer um, so Jador offers pretty much anything from backdrops to linens to floral ten, uh, centerpieces bouquets like Anything that you need for the floral um, and event setup, as well as creating the actual vision, event, and design. Wow. For couples who are looking for florists, could you walk us through the process or some steps on how you help them choose their flowers? Sure. Um, so from the floral side, um, basically you... It's really interesting because you have to come in with some sort of vision of your of your wedding. So I always like to get my clients to pick some sort of colors that they're they're looking towards. And if you're looking towards those colors, then we can start to draft what you like as a palette for your florals and then see what time of year are you getting married? Um, is it a fall wedding? Do we need to um, replace certain flowers because we need to create a certain look? So it's definitely something that you have to ask to have a palette to jump off of. And then we start to try to curate some sort of vision for them. You know, I guess like the most important thing is that the vision is coming to life, but it's also getting the designer to work with the with the client and making it sort of this co-creation. So, yes. It's uh, that's how that's how we start to do it. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely a lot of different steps because when it comes to flowers, there's so many different kinds and so many different tastes. And of course, there are also cultural considerations and things like that. So when couples are selecting flowers, what are some of the considerations a couple should keep in mind when they are um, thinking about this aspect? Absolutely. I mean, I think when couples are selecting their florals, again, it's to be sort of on uh, in, in line with what they're doing. So if you're doing, suppose in a, a destination wedding, you want those tropical flowers and you don't maybe want to necessarily have something that's very typical. We need to make sure that those florals are available at that time. Um, and also as well as like anywhere else, it could, you know, it doesn't just have to be a destination, but it's important to understand that not all flowers are available at all times in every color. So as a florist, it's, it's just something that we have to sort of probe of our clients to see what is it that they like and what is it that they want to accomplish and being like really important to know that you can you can you can create any type of look with flowers really you really can and you can really bring in the textures and you know the, the feels and similar looks and feels mm -hmm. so for flowers i know that there's so many different places and um on like even on the couple themselves they have flowers and on the venue or uh, ceremony and reception what are some of the important spots that you usually ask a um, couple to consider to add floral on their wedding day that's really important i think to mention because there's Oh, so many times where I think budget becomes a sensitivity, but then you look back at it and they're like, oh darn, I you know, in the pictures, I wish I would have put something there and I would have, and they don't understand the pieces. So it's important when we do a walkthrough at the venue that 
we try to highlight what's so important that they're going to be taking their images. So I, of course the head table piece, it needs to be in my mind to, pull, to fully florally decked out. But even something, if it, you are on budget, just a small piece in front of the couple will go a really long way. I always suggest to do floral, fresh florals towards the, in the back on a backdrop, uh, the family table, like the guest tables as well. And now it's really typical that you would do entryways. So if it's in budget and it's in fit, I definitely think it gives a wow factor to the event. And it really helps to bring in the, you know, just like the beginning to the entire evening, it warms it right up. Cocktail hour is another, you know, just something you can just throw a little something on there. And it really, really makes a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. So those are a few of them for your places. I would think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And of course, like budget is definitely a big consideration. Now, about how much do you usually suggest for a couple to a lot out of their entire budget? Um, out of their entire budget, I mean, it's so hard because the scale now is so, you know, all over the place in terms of what the budgets are. And so it's, it's, I don't know, I don't, ha I can't really give you an exact answer about what, you know, what it is in the percentage of that. I think it's just really important that the, com the cu couple is comfortable in spending that and in, in accomplishing their look, but also having the education behind how much florals actually cost and, you know, what goes into them and is putting on an entire event. It's not, it's not something that you know you can do on a smaller budget especially if you want to cover all those areas it's really important to understand that you know um that's going to be in budget so for for florals i would say like you know they do say that it's sometimes on the higher end of a bigger wedding it's probably the second largest cost of the entire event that's to say again that's really bigger budget weddings right so it really depends on it de depends on the, the couple it depends on their specific budget and yeah for sure like when they actually come to you or any floral experts I'm sure you'll be able to let them know what they can substitute in terms of flour so that they can bring the, some of the bigger flowers up, but then we can also support with some lower end flower. Well, I think it's being like, that's where the creativity comes in and trying to understand like what to do for the client when they're, you know, you're, you're, this is how much it's got to be. We're trying to accomplish this. So we have to kind of meet somewhere and again, like curate that relationship and vision together. And that's, you know, we have a starting point and then we, we kind of like go and create, create from there. And definitely so like you can create something that's very romantic and, really high-end looking but not necessarily you have to go and put flowers everywhere you could do like a few blooms with some tall candles that would create a really romantic look um same with if you wanted to do a, a really tropical looking different unique style you could do use foliage um around which is like laid flat which gives a little bit more texture and um gives that you know that nice fresh feeling tropical um but it's not going to break your bank you know so these are things Things that are, are really important for the average size wedding to sort of see where can we create these beautiful memories and have those spaces covered and spend on the budget towards there and have the room still have touches of that to remind ourselves it's for the entire event. Yeah, for sure. So I know I remember you touched upon the destination wedding a little bit. Do you want to expand on what are some of the considerations a couple should think about when they are thinking of a destination wedding in regards to floral design? Sure. I mean, for a destination wedding, it's really, really important because, you know, let's say you are going somewhere warm and tropical and you may not have all of the options that you would have here. And the colors, sometimes we're so committed to the colors that we think that, you know, we'll be able to get everything in that color and get it anywhere in the world. And that's just not the case. So it's so important to be able to, you know, speak with your partners that you're dealing with in your wedding and see right away, okay, what is available, what's not available, what can we do to get our look and feel and again, that's a, like the availability and usually they're really, really helpful in terms of 
helping you source what you really want. But again, it's not going to be, and nothing's guaranteed because they are plural. So it's just, it's just important to know that, you know, whatever destination that you do choose, it may not have all the options there for you. So building that look and feel will have to just be a little bit more flexible. Mm -hmm. And when you're saying discussing with them, I assume that you're talking about the people at the resort or wherever that you're having your wedding there. Yes. So basically your partners are coordinators, your, the, like your planners, anybody who is going to be helping you curate your event. This is going to be, these are going to be the people you're going to go to because usually they don't have like a specific florist on deck. It's they'll sort, like it'll be sourced out. A lot of resorts don't just offer tailor, tailored florals. They'll have more, here's your package. This is what you get. And <laughs> this is how you want to work with it. But if you ask the questions and it's something that you really do want, want to have your input in because it's important it's your wedding it's your day it could have all of the beautiful elements that you wanted to create and not have it you know be like very exotic and not available and totally not within your look and and budget so yeah you can definitely work with the resorts to to help you do that and determine what you'd like i remember now that you're talking about working with the resort, I remember watching this one episode on the millionaire wedding and the event planner just wanted to fly flowers from another place <laughs> into the location. But that yeah. ended up being super expensive. So they ended up not being able to do it and going to a local place to do flowers. And I just thought it was so kind of over the top to be flying flowers <laughs> from another place, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely over the top and it's been done honestly so many times but I think it's important to work with the local flowers and the things that are there because it supports their community it also helps the entire chain of operations it really does help so I think that if you're going to be you know you're going to be choosing to do your wedding at a destination and you know maybe it's going to be in that area support that place right like don't yeah. fly in things that are not available and a lot of like a lot of flowers are imported, but in places like if you were to say Mexico, they've got gorgeous things there. And a lot of, I got married in Mexico. So I did like a traditional Sikh wedding in Mexico and oh I did my own flowers. So it was just really interesting, but we worked with everything that we had available right at our fingertips. It was something that was just like, a, it was really relaxed, but I liked working with the vendors there. I liked having the interactions and, you know, like I had my roses delivered like had to be processed to my hotel room. So I was like making my bridal bouquet right before the night, like the, my, before my wedding. It was awesome. It was really cool. But um, I think it's, it's, you can have an amazing wedding and any destination and not have to, you know, spend thousands of dollars just to create the look and feel. I think the most important thing is to understand that, you know, what it, what's important to you. Maybe, maybe flowers are not so important to you. Maybe they are. But in my mind, like you said, like I would totally miss them at a wedding. <laughs> I would. Yeah, well, yeah, because you work with flowers, you won't be yeah. able to that one, right? And yeah, I think working with the local community is very important. And also, I mean, like, if you're going to on a destination wedding, you want to kind of have something that represents that location also. So having local flowers would definitely be a symbolic thing. It's like, oh, I got it there. I got married there. And all the flowers source from there. And it's just part of the wedding. And definitely it will help support the local community and that, like everyone wins, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's amazing. It like just, you know, ties in with the entire theme and you can do really cute things that kind of go along the way that, you know, represents that and, you know, all the way through down to your flowers. So you can theme it very well like that for sure mm -hmm. all right so our interview is almost coming to a close and oh. i know that you have a free gift for our viewers would you be able to share with us what it is yes we do so we're offering a free throwaway bouquet or a free boutonniere or a free hair piece for anyone who is um, watching yeah and would like to book with us yeah <laughs> Thank you so much, Sonia. It's great to have you here with us. Thank you so much. Thank for you so much for time. having me. And this lady took out her time out of this very busy Valentine's Day period <laughs> to come on to the show to talk with us. So thank you very much for your generosity. Oh my gosh, no problem. It was my pleasure. It was such a pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Sonia. Bye.
Bye.